Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Secret Art of Business. Today, my guest is Marshall Shorts. He is a fierce person in this community, and I am so thrilled to have you as a guest today. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. My pleasure. Now, Marshall, you are the founder of Artfluential. You are also a vice chairman of the Maroon Arts Group. And my favorite part, you are a, well, actually two things. You are a professor at an art school, Columbus, um, Columbus College. College of Art and Design. <laughs> Design. Yeah, with that. And you're also a student from there too. Um, mm -hmm. Let's start talking about just what you're doing right now. Uh, Marshall, tell us a little about, about Artfluential. Yeah, Artfluential, uh, since I was a kid, has been, uh, it wasn't called Artfluential, but since I've been a kid and interested in art um, and then eventually into design, um, I've always wanted to start my own um, business. Um, and so Artfluential is a project in that vein. Um, and we kind of sit at the intersection of, I would say, um, art design uh brand strategy and cultural strategy oh that's really cool that's really really cool yeah yeah and then um who would be your ideal client for that you know i i always grapple with this you know you know just from a <clears throat> excuse me a brand strategy standpoint um i don't know right i i think uh the i'm always sort of thinking about the work i want to do and and the work that uh meets a couple of different um checks a couple different boxes for me. So uh, is it making, you know, social impact? Is it is it making change? Is the effort or the client um, doing something uh, that aligns, you know, with my values? Um, and um, does it pay <laughs> well uh, <laughs> enough to make it make sense, right? Yes. Uh, and um, and then, you know, do, do I have the opportunity to actually be creative and, you know, have a little fun with it. And so you don't always get those with projects, but, you know, those are the types of clients that I like to work with. Uh, the, the space I find myself in um, most often when it comes to clients is, you know, nonprofit sector, some public sector. Um, I, I do, I've been doing a lot of work in sort of the political, you know, not campaign or, or candidate politics, but more uh, progressive sort of um, uh, cultural strategy um, when it comes to messaging and, and uh, progressive politics. So doing some work in that space and those and those um, in social justice. Right. And so um, those are the areas that I'm currently working with clients in for the most part um, and always, you know, small business and, and other spaces, but then also in the arts community as well. So doing some stuff with the city and county um, around public art as well. So, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and then I have my own sort of personal projects or labs that I'm trying to always uh, uphold and, and stay true to um, as an artist, you know. Very cool. Is that where uh, Maroon Arts Group comes in? Kind of, you know, Maroon Arts Group kind of happened organically as a nonprofit. Like we we uh, it was a collective of us that wanted to bring a play to the city. Uh, it had a controversial title and um, but it was timely in 2014 when, um, you know, Black Lives Matter was kind of getting its its, you know, hitting a critical mass and, um you know, there was unrest. And so prior to that, we had started um, myself and a couple other folks, Creative Control Fest, which wanted to center uh, black creatives and creatives of color within the uh, creative industries. And so Maroon Arts Group, I would say, kind of came, you know, out of not out of that work, but as a result of, you know, some of the work we had already sort of been doing. And so um, we wanted to bring that play. The, the short story is we wanted to bring that play and we um, called the collective that was trying to bring that play Maroon Arts Group. We didn't have any plans, um, but we were inspired by Maroon Societies, which were uh, groups of autonomous uh, uh Africans and indigenous folk who were brought here to be enslaved, but um, 
created autonomous communities outside of plantations and in this uh, part of the world. And so that independence after we had got rejected from a couple of places um, was inspi inspiring to us. And we called a Maroon Arts Group. We sold that play out and had an epiphany. We were going to take that the, the proceeds and maybe go visit uh, some historic uh, Maroon um, regions in like Jamaica. But then we decided that, you know, we could invest in local uh, cultural production for um, black artists. And, and that's what we did. So we formalized as a nonprofit and the rest kind of took on a life of its own. Like this wasn't a, a strategic plan or anything like that, but here we are um, eight or nine years later. And, you know, now we have a building. <laughs> so that's, that's actually a lot has happened. What a great story <laughs> that is. And yeah, I also yeah. I'm going to dial back a little bit to when you're talking about your work with um, Artfluential and that you were uh, brave enough to say sometimes you don't know who you're targeting. Because um, I think that's for a lot of people, you know, and mm -hmm. I, I love that you said it because people should not be afraid of that. But it is mm -hmm. also, um, for myself included, really hard to brand yourself and your own company and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's like, I know also what I would like to do, but it does have to pay. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah. It, it's sometimes a little bit of a moving target for a while. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I I love what you're doing. And I would really encourage people to follow both of those groups that you mentioned, your, your company and Maroon Arts, because I think, you know, while it feels like you might, might be just shooting a little bit with Buckshot, um, you are making an impact. So I, I do appreciate you, you on you. that. Um, thank you. So you mentioned like you did all the, or you kind of gloss over you, it, your art as a kid and things like that. Let's uh, go a little deeper with that. What did you do sure. specifically as a kid that was fun, creative, exciting, you know, before someone told you to get to work, that sort of thing? I, I drew. Um, my dad used to draw, he went to the service, he went to the army and I used to find little doodles in his bags, you know, randomly. And I think the story goes that, uh, when I was about four, uh, my dad was like, I said, I asked him how to draw and, uh, he showed me some things. I don't remember this. I was obviously too young, but <laughs> ever since then I had, I had a pencil in my hand and was, was drawing. So, I think that was the the catalyst for me and it and ultimately became the entry point for me to have conversations with folk and and um I was much more comfortable, you know, uh not that I'm like shy, but I'm not the I'm I'm also not like uh boisterous or and, and can be more introverted and so um you know, drawing and art was a way for me to connect with other people, to start conversations with other people, uh, and even in some cases to lead. Um, and oh, that yeah. became a, 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 a gateway. And then I went to Cleveland School of Arts in Cleveland, starting in the fourth grade. I, I got into a major work program at another school, but then the school was a little, you know, rough and, and I really had an affinity for art and I had got accepted to Cleveland School of Arts and went there and spent the rest of mostly most of my school career at that school till I graduated. Um, and uh, that really uh, is an inner city public school. Um, and that really sort of laid a foundation for me. And one of the experiences I had in high school was I got to do like a week long internship at the Plain Dealer, which is like the the main newspaper in Cleveland. Yes. And I was able to learn Photoshop or 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 at least be introduced to like Photoshop and you know play around with it and it became a, a new tool uh you know from pencil and paper and, and pain and all of that to kind of express myself and I was uh that week long internship kind of transformed what was possible for me as an artist or somebody who loved to create into something that could be a viable career. And um, that kind of planted the seed for me to kind of explore. We didn't have computers <laughs> at the school at the time. Right. Certainly didn't have Photoshop. Um, you know, we didn't have a, a home PC <laughs> at that time. Right. I'm <laughs> dating myself. But, um, you know, this was the 90s uh, in, in inner city Cleveland. And so 
that really um, was transformative for me. And that, and, that, and that work was published in The Plain Dealer. So we had a whole section, like a mini newspaper in The Plain Dealer. And to be able to see, you know, that sort of come to life was very transformative. So, yeah. And, you know, art was was a, a saving grace for me um, growing up um, where I grew up. I love that you said that you work for newspaper because I did too during the summer. So it's it's great to meet another fellow newspaper person. <laughs> uh, but one of, one of the things that I loved about, you know, working in the newspaper, and maybe you had this epiphany too, it's like, I can actually get a job where I'm yeah, doing yep, early yep. things. And, you know, that was, um, when I went into school, at least, I had no idea what I was going to do. I just knew I wanted to be an artist of some kind. And when jobs yeah. started getting introduced to you, that's kind of when, like I said, this epiphany happens and you're like, oh, this could be really, really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I loved it. I loved it. I still have I paper too. today. I did too. Did you have any um, teachers along the way that saw your talent and told you that you should pursue it? Or was it, um, and I, I'm kind of going down the road of where, you know, I was an art kid and a teacher did say something mm -hmm. to me, but um other kids too would notice like, oh my God, you can draw. Can mm -hmm. you draw me this? Can you draw me this? So did you get um, feedback from other kids, other teachers to kind of encourage you other than your dad who kind of started the thing, but um, mm -hmm. that, that kind of, you know, reinforced your thoughts as far as like, you know, this is a path I want to pursue. Oh, absolutely. Um, all of my teachers, you know, I was, I went to a Montessori you know, oh, okay. uh, it was a public Montessori, ironically, uh, in Cleveland, no longer exists, but I went to that school and I don't know if you remember, like these were called like magnet schools back in the day. Um, yes. so they were public schools, but they were more like specialized. So one school might be trade, you know, you learn how to do work on cars. Another might be law and public service. So Cleveland had a number of these schools. And so my, uh, matriculation through school was, you know, Montessori to this uh, arts magnet school. And it was beautiful because, you know, even though we didn't have a lot of amenities, we had a lot of culture, we had a lot of um, art. And so because it was an art school, you know, it, it was encouraged. I mean, I had art every day. Um, I even had to take other curriculums like drama and photography um, and uh, music, right? And so um, I was fortunate to have really good teachers, namely uh, Mr. Carver, who was my uh -huh. like middle school art teacher, and then my high school art teacher, Mr. Hamlet, uh, who really, um, you know, who really encouraged us to, and who were talented themselves to, to, um, to pursue, right? To, to, mm -hmm. to the optics, right? And they, and they were African American, you know what I mean? So they were black folk and, and the school was majority yeah. black folk. So it, it, it made, you know, uh, it made it possible for me to kind of see myself in the space uh, in a particular kind of way, um, unbeknownst to me at the time, right? It was just, you know, I'm going to school with, with kids in my neighborhood and all of that. But to have that foundation for me uh, was, was pivotal, I think. And even with that, you know, we know creative careers are just hard to sustain yes. in general. Just so, general. you know, having that foundation really helped. Um, so I have to give shout outs to Mr. Carver and Mr. Hamlet. And then I had a special English teacher, uh, Miss Harvey, who who's passed away some years ago, uh, who was really instrumental in just, help, you know, cussing me out and, and, help, and telling me to get my act together when I was, you know, being a, a, a knucklehead in class and things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Not a bad, I wasn't a bad kid, but you know, no, you, I get you, it. I get you're it. trying to be with the cool kids, you know? Uh, <laughs> and so, you know, we was, you know, doing all of it, graffiti and, and everything. But that was, you know, to some degree accepted and expected. Oh, yeah. Uh, because they understood the role of, of culture in, um, in, in, in the space. So, yeah, yeah. And I was fortunate yeah. in that way to have just folk around me who were, who were encouraging. And I know that's not true because I, even as I was growing up, I had parents who had kids that were younger than me were like, well, what can they do with this? skill of art right um, yes yes you know yeah you covered a lot of great ground there because a lot of people who 
might have wanted to pursue an art career, we're typically encouraged not to because, you know, there, there's no way you're going to make money at that. I mean, you're going to be a starving artist, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to be hard. And, and part of that, there is some truth to. <laughs> sure, uh, sure. But on the, other hand, on the other hand, if you do have the guidance and the people seeing your potential and helping you believe in yourself, there are careers yeah. out here, which are fantastic and you can live in a lot of joy if you're not spending a lot of time doing things that you don't really want to do but you are really yeah. chasing your passion and things like that so i'm, I'm glad you brought that up yeah. and also having role models so if people find that themselves kind of painted in a corner saying you know what my, my parents want me to do this you know what that's great but you know talk to some other people that might have the jobs that you want or people that are like yeah. you that have the jobs that you want you know and the yeah. fact that you brought those examples, I think, are going to be very helpful for, helpful for some people. Yeah, we were, uh, I don't know if you know much about Cleveland. Um, our school was sit sit situated, like, right in between Case Western Reserve, University Circle of Cleveland. So, like, Severance Hall, the Art Museum, the Cleveland Institute of Art, were all, like, in walking distance of the school. Wow. Um, and, I, and I'll tell you what, what also sparked me uh, was in like fifth or sixth grade. Um, and again, I was surrounded by other kids that could draw. Right. Mm -hmm. So it kind of everybody was an art kid in some kind of way. You were singing, you were dancing, you were, yes, yes. you know what I mean? It was like fame. Right. All all the way up to <laughs> like the the school falling apart. So in Ohio, when those school levies in the early 2000s, late 90s were like, you know, Ohio, they actually featured our school in one of those, <laughs> one of those videos. But so, you know, that, that, that humility I had and respect for other artists was always there. But also I remember, um, you know, we still did the stuff that kids did. We draw, we drew in class, you know, while we were supposed to be listening to math and, and things like that. And so I had a really good friend and buddy of mine, me and Carl Willis. And, um, he uh, is probably still my favorite artist to this day, but we used to draw these characters and we had another friend, Aaron, who wasn't an art major. He was, I think, a, a instrumental music major. But, you know, we had other kids that would just ask us to draw them pictures. So Aaron would take these pictures we were drawing in class home to his neighborhood mm -hmm. and he would sell them to kids in his neighborhood for like five dollars ten dollars and he would come back and bring us some money the next day and we were like oh my gosh. and then it became a little business right <laughs> so it was like we spent time in, in class like drawing these pictures of, of characters we were making up and and um he was taking them back and selling them to kids in his neighborhood who didn't draw and you know i think he took a little commission but you know ten fifteen dollars twenty dollars you know it went a long way at the at the penny candy yeah. store and uh, <laughs> as a kid. So uh, that also was a moment of clarification for me that this was something that, you know, had value for other people uh, and that they wanted. And so, you know, I think it's always sort of been entrepreneurial for me in that regard. I think I had yes. my first real client in like sixth grade. It was a community <laughs> choir and I, I drew a T-shirt and they printed it. And so... Um, ever since then, it's like, you know, I wanted to kind of start the black Disney, uh, you know, because I was like, well, one Disney was the only place you could see to have a viable, Neat. you know, career <laughs> in like animation or something. But Neat. also I was surrounded by, you know, communities that, uh, you know, didn't, who weren't, you know, I was a part of communities that didn't see this as a career path um, or a viable option. And so for me, it was always, it's always sort of been a mission and this kind of leads into the work I do today to employ my community um, and, and art is the vehicle, art and culture and, and design is the vehicle, which I'm best equipped to kind of you to do to foster that uh, because exactly. I saw so much talent around me, but not so much opportunity. And so, you know, I always try to use the platform I have to, to open that door, employ my my community. I definitely appreciate you reaching back and helping up others with the experience you have, the things that you know, the opportunities that you can kind of share. So all of that is very, very commendable. And like I said, I appreciate you for that. We need more people like this out here, especially doing being cheerleaders for artists and things like that. We have, I think, everything else covered except the arts um, yeah. as far as cheerleading go and things like that. 
All right. Thank you. So are you still drawing now or what are you doing now that when you're not working, that is completely separate, that is still fun and creative and exploratory or innovative? Yeah, I still doodle. Uh, I can't help it. You know, I don't draw as much as I would like to. That's something that, you know, as I get older, I'm like, I have to commit, make a commitment back to finding my sort of artistic voice. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, you know, when you work in the creative industries, it, it can be easy to kind of forget that you have a artistic voice as an artist. And, and but I do uh, have outlets, you know, I think I've I've always been interested in photography. I took photography in school. I've always sort of been interested in film and different media. So I find ways to, whether it's, you know, shooting pictures and, and, and photography, um, I, you know, digital, uh, digital illustration. Um, I have some artwork actually showing in Columbus on a digital Ike's and uh, I think a billboard in, in um, Baltimore right now, some artwork that I did. So, you know, it's still there. It's, it's, uh, you know, I want to make it more of a practice uh, and that's something I'm committing to uh, uh, this year, um, or at least trying to convince myself to commit to and, and find space for. And, but, you know, it, I try to uh, give myself some grace uh, to <laughs> allow whatever medium is most accessible and accept that that's the way that I'm creating. So if that's taking a video on my phone and kind of playing with mm-hmm. editing it on my phone or taking some photos and editing it on my phone because it's most accessible uh, right then and there then I'm saying that's, you know, that's, that's okay. Right. It doesn't have to be a masterpiece every time I'm still using that muscle. I've been playing with some AI, uh, lately, you know, uh, I'm still, I don't know yet. I don't know. I mean, it's here. It's, it's, it's not going anywhere. Uh, I think, you know, how it's a tool like anything else and Mm -hmm. we have to, uh, you know, work on some ethics around it. I'm always thinking about, you know, when we add a technology, what technique are we removing and yes. um, what craft are we removing? So, you know, obviously there are these existential questions that are, you know, coming to mind because AI is going to change the world, is changing the world as we speak. And so, yeah, I have a lot of questions around it, but I'm also looking at, you know, Mid Journey, for instance, is what I've been kind of playing around in and how do we... Uh, use it as a tool for imagination and things I wouldn't necessarily be able to pull off with the tools that I have, right? Um, and 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 not necessarily as a replacement for what what we do as artists and creatives and designers and things like that, but as a tool to help us explore and ideate uh, for other things. So, yeah, yeah, I, you know, I paint, I draw, I, I take pictures, I you know, try to, but most of my creative expression has come through organizing, um, and curating, um, experiences for that, that engage community with art and cultural production. And I think that's where, you know, the work I do with, have done in the past with Creative Control Fest and Maroon Arts Group and Art Fluential has been, and I have to also include that as part of my creative practice is that, community and collaboration and 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 creating those experiences uh are also a part of the way i'm able to sort of express myself uh i I love that you brought that up because um what people need to understand too is that creative people and maybe sometimes people don't think they're all that creative don't have to be drawing all the time they can create these experiences for people or be a part of that because of the sheer sheer joy that they get out of it like when you see someone who's just amazing at dance or somebody who's just amazing at singing which i cannot do either but i love it <laughs> and <laughs> i come I from a musical it. family <laughs> <laughs> and i you know I have a whole variety of different types of music that I listen to. And I, you know, I love going to the ballet as much as I would like going to see something contemporary because I just love when people can really master their craft and it brings, that brings Mm -hmm. me joy too. So I'm glad that you brought that up because if you feel like, you know, I can't draw, but that doesn't mean you can't also experience part of this 
right brain mm-hmm. activity, joy, that is also very, very vital. And if you can get involved in that sort of thing, or even if it's as simple as treating yourself to go out and see somebody else do something amazing, it's it's definitely worth your while to do that. But yeah, just be a part of mm-hmm. it. Just get just get in there, be a part of it in however way possible. I also appreciate too, you bringing up your comments about AI, because I personally fully believe right now, I feel it's very similar to when the Macintosh came on the scene where everybody kind of freaked out, all the people that were doing key lining and Ruby Lith and stat camera stuff yeah. were kind of freaking out. But the ones that learned how to use the tools were the ones that survived. So I love that you're starting to dabble with this and just see see what it's up to. You know, it, I agree that it's not going yeah. to replace a lot of things, but it's kind of cool for coming up with ideas and things like that. And it's like, oh, damn, I oh, never yeah. thought about that. Um, but it, you can't. You could, but it, it helps get your juices flowing when it comes to ideas and things like that. My ho- my hope is that it'll force us to become more human and and be more present with oh, what what and who we are. Right, like I think we'll yearn for more in person, intimate experiences like live music and and just things that you know we we do as humans, like the the things that can be prompted or. Uh, are that are just basically competent work will 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 be replaced right and so um I, I don't know how i feel about that i think you know that's going to because of the bias that exists in in everything these days right um it it it, it will create inequities and and things like that and so my hope is that we uh, don't rush to just <laughs> you know, fast track this and, and what capitalism loves to do is, you know, just kind of yeah. worry about the bottom line and we don't forget the, the humanity and the human and the people who will be, who potentially are impacted by the advent of these tools. Right. And, and there's a language you have to know how to use yes. this, these tools. Right. And if you don't understand the language of AI or, or the tool itself, you know, um, those are things that are kind of looming for me that I'm always sort of thinking about, you know, I I think um you know people thought McPaint was going to change the world. <laughs> or people right. that be designers anymore. <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> <Not> true. <laughs> right, right. Um, right. Um I, I loved how you ended your part of your segment where you were just talking about humanity and the arts and things like that. Mm-hmm. So I will wrap this up by thanking you again, Marshall, for being here. I will have all your contact information in the notes of this podcast. And if people want to check out what you're doing um, and any of those things, um, they will know exactly how to get a hold of you or at least learn more about what you're doing. But thank you. Thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate you. and, And thank you for having me. I'm honored. Right, I am.